This is an update on my heart attack and stroke, which happened March 29th. Right in there. I was working out and I was doing a set of Smith squats and the Smith machine is kind of old. So I had ran into a problem where I got stuck under it. And it was all of that pressure at that time because as a person who had high blood pressure and I was unaware, and this is something, you should get your blood pressure checked. You should get this on the regular. And if you have high blood pressure, you should get it controlled because what happened to me could happen to you. I had very high blood pressure that was unregulated for who knows how long. And I had taken pre-workout, which is caffeine, which dramatically raises your blood pressure. So I think on that particular day, all of the things were right for this to happen. After that set of squats, I started to feel some pressure and it was, it wasn't like on television where, you know, someone grabs their chest and they collapse. I didn't have any chest pain. I had more than likely, I had a breathing problem. That was the hardest thing, you know, it was just getting a good breath of air. And that went on for about 30 minutes. Then it began to deteriorate and get much, much worse. So my girl dropped me off at the emergency room. On the drive there, I could feel it getting worse and worse and worse. And uh, I got to the emergency room and they came out and got me in the wheelchair and I told them, I just, I, I can't breathe. That was the biggest concern I had. And apparently from that point on, it was lights out. Uh, I also had a stroke at the same time. So between the heart attack and the stroke, my memory went to crap. I couldn't remember passwords. I was told that I couldn't remember my girl's name. I didn't even remember who she was. A dark other personality came out. I, I, I was wilding out. Uh, when I was back in the cath lab, this is where they take you to insert a catheter into your arteries, you know, going through the groin. Apparently I was combative and they had to give me something to knock me out. That could be kind of scary because I, you know, I'm a pretty big dude and I was strong. And then I was sedated for about three days. I almost died. Uh, yesterday was my first checkup after this event and the doctor was like you know when we first met you know you were in a very bad way he said frankly i thought you were going to die and that's how it was the first three days because the first night um, my heart function was five percent so i was five percent away from death and yesterday it's almost 70 percent and my doctor, the cardiologist, he was really shocked at how fast I bounced back because he was telling me with older patients, usually this is the end because I had a major heart attack. As we go through this process of getting better, I been thinking this is the second time that I've almost died. The first time, you know, the videos up here, how a booty call saved my life. I had four bleeding ulcers and almost bled out. And that recovery was much longer and painful than this one. Because the first, you know, I was in the hospital for two weeks and the cost of all this was almost $300,000 between being in the emergency room and being in the hospital for two weeks, uh, being in ICU. I went through a lot and it's kind of good because the stroke has pretty much, I don't remember most of it. I don't remember 90% of it. And I, I, reportedly that I grabbed this nurse's boob. I don't know who I was, but I went to an alternative personality when I was out of it. And I started to come around around day five. Day one was the big day because the doctor, he, he's like, you were in a very bad way. You know, like I said, you were on death's doorstep, the way he put it. And 
First day, I rebounded a little bit. Also, because of the high blood pressure in the event, they almost put me on dialysis. So, heart attack, stroke, and dialysis. This is what I got for not checking my blood pressure. And once again, you know, if you got blood pressure issues, you should get that checked and should stay on top of it because unregulated blood pressure and I can't really say stress. It was the blood pressure most of all that got me. As I got home, because I got out the hospital in two weeks, uh, I got out the hospital on the Saturday, I remember I had no energy. Some days I would spend all day in bed. Uh, my energy level is probably 60% of what it used to be. So there's a lot of room for improvement. And I just started working out again Monday. So today is, the, is going to be the second workout because I, I had a bad night of sleep, so I didn't have the energy to work out Tuesday. But, you know, talk to the doctor about it because there's so much stuff on the Internet and you really need to have a doctor to talk to because when, you know, because the way it was that people who had heart issues, heart attacks shouldn't work out. And the doctor had a totally different opinion. He's like, you know, you're working out weights, just take it slow, you know, go ahead and walk, you know, just make sure you have someone with you. He was totally open to it. And uh, we talked about cardiac rehab and all these other things. So if you're a person with high blood pressure or heart disease, this is something you have to take very seriously because uh, when I was leaving in the hospital, the nurse was very strongly saying, do not miss taking your medication because I'm on five different medications. He's like, you know, even if you had to go to the emergency room to get your dose, do so. That's how critical it is because if I don't take my medication, what happened before will happen again until I can bring my blood pressure down. So um, taking my blood pressure every morning, every night, and it has to stay within a certain range. Part of this journey is what you do before matters. Because one of the reasons that I think I've come back so quickly is because I was working out twice a day before this happened for months. You know, I was getting my swole on, I was in the gym, and I feel that that is one of the reasons that because the doctor, he's like, you know, he was like, I'm glad you're looking well, you know, you look healthy, you know, you look good. He was kind of shocked at how fast I rebounded. He said, that must be youth. I didn't realize that 52 years old was young, but part of the journey, part of the pursuit of happiness is living life that you want to. And another reason for my rapid recovery or rapid recovering, because I'm still recovering, because like I said, my energy levels are 60, 65 percent of what it used to be. And, you know, there'll probably be a few months before I get back to where I was. I also lost 30 pounds when I was in the hospital. There's a few things that came along with the heart attack, like my appetite. I can't eat a full meal. I'm eating like children's meals. It's just like, you put a plate in front of me. Once I get to a certain point, I just automatically stop. And like I said, I've lost like 30 pounds. A lot of that was the newer muscle, but I wasn't eating in the hospital. I had no appetite whatsoever. And then when they started giving me food, I can barely eat it. I eat, well, eat, and it's still going on. Uh, another thing that has come is I get cold like when everyone else is hot. So that's another thing. And there's some sleeping issues. But typically, one of the reasons that I was able to recover, because the doctor told me straight up, he's like, if sleeping issues is the only thing you have after what you went through, he said, you're doing very well. He just like, he, he's like, he, he, pretty much you don't have no problems. Because you gotta understand, he deals with people who've gone through this and the outcome isn't this good. And, you know, with the stroke thing, 
for, you know, uh, my laptop was brought to me. I couldn't remember the password how to get in my laptop. Uh, I couldn't remember how to log into my bank accounts, which freaked me out. All that just disappeared and it came back after I got out of the hospital. That was just really, really crazy how that went down. And a big part of the, I think of my recovery is I've had my own schedule. I didn't have the job to go back to. I have a business to run, which I started working on the third week, doing what I could. And you know, I'm still not back to where I want to be, but we're, we're progressing nicely. You know, every day there's more and more improvement. And, you know, essentially because of the breathing issue I had, which brought on the stroke, I think I didn't have any oxygen to my brain for about 30 seconds because they caught it and they started doing what they do in the hospital to bring you back. But for about 30 seconds, my brain had no oxygen. And my heart was doing wasn't, you know, it was operating at 5%. So I was in a very bad way. And, you know, my girl told me, she's like, if you were to go to Northside and to that staff, a lot of people be shocked that you're still alive. In reflection, why was I able to recover so quickly? It's because of the things that were done before I got really sick. I mean, I was eating, oh, okay, I gotta work on that. I was working out consistently. Um, I believe that heredity brought this on because you know sometimes you can eat right, you can exercise, and you can still be cursed with high blood pressure and high cholesterol because that can be an inherited heredity. And that's part of my problem. So that's some stuff that I gotta stay on and like I said, went to the doctor yesterday. It was a very good visit. Uh, I made, he's like, he's like, you've come a tremendous way in a very short period of time. Cause he's like, are you back at work? I was like, I'm back at work. He, he was just, this is very good. And um, the big thing of this is living life on your own terms. I was doing that before. And this wake up call, as you can call it, has made me appreciate the things that happened before even more. The ability to work from home, the ability to set your schedule, the ability to create your own economy, the ability. This is some really good stuff that I should be more grateful for. Uh, so one of the things I'm gonna start doing is allowing a little bit more access and we're gonna double up the training because this is my second chance at life. Because like I said, uh, if I had been left here alone, I could be dead. And that's a really startling thing to say because you say it, but when you really sit down and think about it, life could have been over in just a heartbeat just that quick, I could not be here. You know, once again, health is wealth. Um, one of the things that I'm probably going to start doing is taking, uh, doing a little bit more traveling. And that's really the big change because that was already the plan, but you know, I had a lot of stuff going on and the working out thing. Cause you know, I'm grateful to lose 30 pounds. Cause like right now I weigh 250 like 253. And when I went to the hospital, I was 270 something. I've ordered these pre-prepared meals, low sodium. So that will come on the 24th and I'm going to start eating those because my goal is to get muscular, but not to gain all that weight back. I mean, I, I, I got saggy skin because I lost weight so quickly because it, it was just like, what is this? Where did that come from? And there was other things that happened from being poked every day, from the tape, the residue and the stuff of, in the leads for the EKG that was on me and all kinds of stuff that happened. 
And the journey continues because once again, you know, this is a second lease on life. I've been through this and the first time I think I did a really good job because I created the life that I wanted. I was living the way I wanted. I'm living where I want to live. I'm living how I want to live. And now to do that much harder, to be more grateful, to be more contemplative of what has happened and how far I have come because, you know, I was in the gym Monday and I was looking at my notes and I saw the last entry was the 29th in there. So it's kind of interesting because I'm a little sore because I started again, but this is the process. This is what a, you know, a heart attack looks like. And I'm one of the fortunate ones because I didn't have any chest pain and angina. I didn't have any of that. There are many people who go through this process and they have that chest pain, which can hamper a lot of their life. You know, the fact that I can get back in the gym and, you know, I've lost a lot of strength, but that's something that's going to come back fairly quickly over the next few months. And I'm very fortunate that my heart attack was what it was because uh, I have a stent and that's when they take a, a calf, go through your groin, go up to your heart and rub out the blockage because I had 100% blockage and they took and I have a metal stent in my heart. That's, you know, very interesting. You know, the most critical parts of this hospital bill was the doctor who did all of that, for him to take me to the cath lab and put the stent and stuff in and the drugs and everything, we're right at about $8,000 out of the $300,000, the most critical part. And it's very interesting how uh, this thing goes on. Once again, you know, get your blood pressure checked. Do that for yourself, do that for your family. Uh, I was negligent in that because I thought I was eating halfway all right. I was working out. I thought I was fine. Uh, even if you're healthy, you still need to go to the doctor because of hereditary. Because you could be doing all the right things. You'd be eating and everything. But heredity can still mess you up. Well, this can still happen to you even though you're doing all the right things. Um, you know, it's very educational learning about this stuff because... On my mother's side, this wasn't an issue. So this is something that's coming from my father's side. But it, it is something, you know, take care of yourself. Get your blood pressure checked, go do your regular doctor visits to prevent what happened to me from happening to you. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.